now call on uh, Archbishop Broglio to speak about the uh, Archdiocese for the Military Services. Your Eminences, brother bishops and priests, sisters and brothers in the Lord. My first words are of gratitude to the members of the administrative committee who granted me the opportunity to address you once again about a pastoral problem that affects all of us. Secondly, I thank the ordinaries of the 179 dioceses and eparchies who took up the special collection in 2013 to support your faithful who are my pastoral responsibility at the present moment. The collection was very successful, and I hope that such will also be the case next year when it is scheduled again. If the financial situation of the Archdiocese for the Military Services has improved, which thanks to you it has, the presence of priests has dwindled to the point of being desperate. Pope Francis recently told military ordinaries from around the world that the role of military chaplains is to accompany and support those in need on their journey to be a comforting and brotherly presence for them all. I may soon be unable to provide Catholic priests to the military. Next year, the army will heretofore stable in the number of priests in uniform will lose at least 11 to retirement and separation for medical reasons. The Navy, which serves the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard, at the moment has 48 priests, of whom 36 can be deployed. But by June, there could be a reduction due to retirements. The Air Force also faces a drop in the current number of chaplains, right now around 56. The numbers mean that it will be almost impossible to ensure that the men and women, even in deployed locations and on aircraft carriers, will have access to a Catholic priest. If the armed forces were ever to be completely without priests, most observers agree that they would soon be completely without chaplains of any kind. Approximately one-fourth of the active duty personnel and their immediate families are Catholics. At present, those Catholics, totally around a million people, are served only by 217 priests in a territory that covers the globe. They represent only 8% of all military chaplains. That suggests that others might easily cultivate Catholic young people seeking spiritual counsel. Some very well-organized groups eagerly present programs for youth ministry. They offer them as ecumenical, but they are generally based on a very Protestant or even fundamentalist approach to the faith. If there is no priest there to lobby for funds for a Catholic program or to sponsor an alternative, the program appears to be very appealing to the leadership on an installation who grants the necessary resources to that program. I feel a little bit like Mother Cabrini, the first saint with an American passport, who used to borrow or used to take pieces of coal from the poor she served in order to have some to give to people who were even less poor. And I say that because I recognize that every archdiocese, diocese, and eparchy is understaffed and struggling to meet the legitimate needs of people entrusted to your pastoral care. It is not easy to ask you to sacrifice a young, physically fit priest to care for that portion of, the flo of your flock that is out of sight and under my care as long as they are on active duty but the dire situation leaves me few other options. I am very grateful for the contract priests we have, priests that serve out of uniform, 
but their service is limited. They cannot go into the work areas. They are not included in those that advise leadership. And so they cannot accomplish as much as a priest in uniform can. Certainly, consultative bodies in a diocese have a role to play in the assignment of priests. But fundamentally, the ordinary has the vision and also understands the importance of caring for all the faithful. If your diocese does not have a priest serving as an active duty military chaplain, please consider releasing one to serve the Catholics of your diocese who wear a uniform and are far from home. There is also a return. The military is the largest single source of vocations in this country. The CARA study for 2015 has revealed that 6% of the newly ordained priests who responded to the survey are prior service, and 16% came from families where either the mother or the father or both had been or are on active duty. 22% of the newly ordained represents a significant contribution to your diocese, but I am not sure that the Archdiocese for Military Services can sustain those percentages if there are no priests among the military population. As we all know too well, Contact, good role models, and familiarity with sacerdotal ministry are essential elements in promoting vocations. While the government is reducing the size of the armed forces, the world situation as we just witnessed once again dramatically on Friday evening in Paris continues to make the need for a strong military more evident. Please encourage your priests to consider the possibility of serving in the military. You might want to talk to the recruiters who are in the corridor outside of this room. So often, seminarians and young priests tell recruiters and me that your vocation directors, personnel board members, and vicars general dissuade priests from approaching you about eventual service as a military chaplain. They say, do not bother because the bishop will say no. Perhaps to counter this perception, you could invite a recruiter to address a gathering of priests to illustrate the benefits and the challenges of this ministry. The Archdiocese continues to sponsor discernment retreats and has also embarked on a new initiative called For God and Country to acquaint small groups of priests about the ministry of chaplains and some of the possibilities that are available. The first retreat was very successful, and I thank those bishops who released five of the 10 participants for ministry in the military. Allow me also to address once again the concern of many bishops regarding the loss of a priest for 20 years or forever. That is not the only option. You can also send a priest for three to five years and then send another. While the Archdiocese for Military Services does want some long-term commitments because we need some priests in leadership roles with rank, but we can also use many for shorter commitments. And there is an advantage. They return home with training, perhaps with clinical pastoral education and other skills. They return enriched and better able to serve your people in the diocese. I can also cite the example of many priests who have returned to their diocese and taken assignments. They brought with them a wealth of experience and a new vision. While the archdiocese is also charged with the pastoral care of Catholics who are treated or frequent the medical centers of the departments for veterans affairs, I have not made an appeal for priests in that sector. While they are always in demand, recruiting is a bit simpler because there are no age or weight restrictions. <laughs> However, the need of Catholic, Catholic patients are diligently followed by the archdiocese. The archdiocese is also care, charged with the pastoral care 
of your civilian faithful who serve the federal government in non-military capacities outside of the borders of the United States. The shortage of priests and means does not really permit a valuable attempt to serve those populations who live around the world. From the 33 years that I spent outside of the United States, I am comforted by the knowledge that they are generally assisted by the local diocese where they live. In fact, those international communities gathered for an English language mass and sacraments would probably bristle at the notion that they are somehow subject to U.S. archdiocese. The local bishops might also have some thoughts on that issue. Returning to the need for chaplains, I am again reminded how just a year ago, Pope Francis described this noble vocation, which is, I quote, to dedicate yourself even at the risk of your own life to ensuring that the faithful serving to defend your country might not be deprived of the spiritual food they need to survive. The Archdiocese for the Military Services is extremely grateful to those local churches that have sacrificed one or more priests. The faithful served by the AMS are praying even now that you might respond generously to my appeal, for it really is imperative that every diocese have at least one priest to ensure that your faithful, who defend our religious freedom, do not have to sacrifice theirs. Thank you for your support and your kind attention. Archbishop Rolio, thank you so very much. And I know you'll be available to answer uh, any individual questions 